What's up everybody, my name is Chris and today I want to talk to you about a tool that I programmed for myself over the last few years and now took a bit seriously over the last weekend and actually made something that I think can be really beneficial for anyone who is in podcasting or in YouTube filmmaking. And that is all about chapter markers for those respective platforms or show notes as they're called for podcasts. Now, what I'm specifically talking are those little time code markers in the description of videos and that now also get used as chapter markers. But I'm not necessarily here in this video going to talk about how you can bring those into YouTube, but I actually want to talk about the step that is before that, and that is how do you actually get to those markers? How can you actually create those markers without actually having to type out those numbers all yourself? Now, first I want to quickly show you what I actually mean and that is best done on the screen here and here we have the YouTube player and if you've been around YouTube for some time you probably know those little chapter markers right here those sections that we nowadays have and then also the way that we can actually have these chapters here on the side and those chapter markers are actually done by including them inside of the description of a video and there we have this type of layout where we have the time markers based on these minutes and seconds. And then if you have hours, you also have that included and a text element after that. And those then become these chapter markers right here, which then are clickable for the user and they actually can tell better what they are actually watching right there, what, uh, what the video is about in that section. Now the challenge is how do you actually get those time markers and the text after it without literally having to type 03 colon 35 and then size where you want to have this marker. And for that I actually have been using markers inside of Premiere Pro for a very long time and that is really simply done by having these little markers inside of the program that I use here. Now I've been doing this in Premiere Pro as well as in Audition and also in DaVinci Resolve and it always is the same workflow. You have some shortcut to apply a marker and for me that is M so if I press the M button right there then I have a new marker there and now if I press the backslash button then I can actually edit this marker and give it a name and the name is exactly that what I am then displaying in YouTube. The problem however is that now if we export this and we go to export and then say markers and I'm gonna just save this as a ZSV. You can also save it as a TXT to the desktop and I'm gonna save it as a ZSV right there and then I'm also going to save it as a text file and now we save that. And now I have these two text files and opening that up here we have the CSV not really that helpful and then the text file also not really that helpful in this case we don't even get the title we just get a asset name an endpoint and a description so those two ways don't really work but when you do program then you can actually do stuff with those text things and you can transform that stuff by simply reading those lines and making them into a different layout. Now I've been using a little script for a very long time especially for audition because I'm constantly editing podcasts for other people and there I also do those marker settings and then I need the show notes that then can be included in blog posts or also in the descriptions of those episodes. And for that I had to transform this here into something that is more readable for the users. So then I got going and started programming and it was relatively simple and it was simply a small script that I could run on a text file to transform that text file into a different format. And that worked great for some time. But then I also thought what about other people that might want to use something similar. And that's actually where now this video and also the app or the tool that I made comes in and that is going to be called Chaptered. And I have it right here on this website and it's chaptered.app and it is basically live right now. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's going to be error free because this is still very much a prototype version. But I thought that I would share this because it is a process to get something like this to a place where it actually is more user friendly and also works as expected. 
But right now, I already have certain functionalities implemented and I wanted to share that with you here so that if you want to, you could already start using this for the conversion of these CSV files that we have right here and then make them into something like this here on the right hand side. And that is actually some magic, I would say. It is really cool how you can take programming skills and then build something like this to automate a process that you need to do every day or every couple of days. In my case, what I previously was using before actually writing a script here is that I was using this editor. And this is already a pretty advanced text editor because there I can do something like this, for example, and I know for a fact that right now I don't have any entries that are longer than one hour. So I was actually able to simply mark all of them with this text editor and then remove the zeros, copy the other part, remove the rest and voila, I have my YouTube markers. But then again, this is a process that I have to do every time I publish a video. And also, what if you have different types of markers? And I think that in this video, we actually have a different one because as you can see here, we have a chapter marker and then we have these other markers. And the thing here is that chapter markers and comment markers, if we look back into Premiere Pro, are actually different markers. Right here we have a red marker and there we have a green marker. And that is something that I wanted to also differentiate between because those red markers are the markers that I use, for example, for ad inserts, as well as the links in the info cards up there. And then I also use those to, for example, mark something where I want to create more B-roll for it. And the comment markers, the green ones in Premiere Pro, are the ones that I use for the chapter markers for YouTube specifically. So all of that to say, that this is a very much a manual process. And especially if you have a longer video project that is like 30, 40 minutes long. And that again, we have this right here. And now if I just simply copy this text over, this is the markers that we exported from Premiere Pro. And I bring this over into the input field here, mark everything and paste it. And voila, we have a completely different setup on the right hand side. We have the markers actually sorted or sectioned by the type of the marker. So we have chapter markers and we have comment markers and the comment markers are the ones that I actually use for the chapter markers in YouTube. And then we also have those timestamps there and all of that can be configured and changed based on the fields above right here. So for example, I can say I don't want the sectioning. I don't want to differentiate between the different types of markers. So I can say I don't want to section, click there. Now we have all of the markers in just one list, but already a little bit of the reduction of information that is provided in this huge text area right here. But what if we actually want to have these sections because we just want to have our YouTube markers? For that, I would say we go with section by marker type. Then also the timestamp is something that we can change to minimal so that we don't have the leading hour. So we have minimal right there. So we have the leading zeros and not the hour. And if we go all the way to minimal, for example, you can see that we then lose the leading zeros and we just have that. And I would always keep that because it is a much nicer form factor, I would say. But we also don't need the comment marker type or the marker type in general to be part of this text. And there we have this line template that comes into play and we can actually just remove all of this because that basically says we want to have the time in, which is the time that the marker in point is set and then a colon and then the type and then the title. And we want to remove all of those things. So we have space colon and then the type and then the other colon remove that and voila right here we have the chapter markers that you can now use inside of your youtube video and you can just paste that in there and you have those chapters working there are of course other functions as well like sorting we can sort by marker type or time code in point for example Right now, this is the time code in point. Usually that is already the case, but if we want to do it reverse, we can do that. So we have the descending order and then ascending again. And then we can also include the milliseconds, for example, or the frames. And then we can, if we want to do the full one, for example, then you actually have the full timestamp with milliseconds, 
This is the one without the frames or milliseconds because milliseconds and frames is different between Premiere Pro and Adobe Audition. That's why this is milliseconds or frames. And then we have the minimal. Again, this is the one that you want for YouTube. I want to make this more easy and right now you can see there is a bit of a FAQ with a bit of information about what this is about and how it works and what it is for. But over the next few weeks and probably months, this might actually change a bit more so that it becomes even more easy. Maybe I even want to provide some template settings so that you can easily say like, I want to have the YouTube markers or I want to have cross compatibility and be able to actually reverse the markers again because that's also something that I sometimes use to send those markers out and then let them correct their markers and then send them back and import them back so that we have the cross compatibility to be able to take the output markers and then create those CSV markers again. So all of that is going to be part of the future. But part of what I wanted to share here with you is that this here is a start. That is a very bare bones prototype, but it works in a certain way and it already is something that can be useful even with this limited and somewhat finicky feature set. Now, this can grow from here, but if I don't publish it, if I don't start to use it myself and I just wait until it is perfect, I'm not going to go very far. Now we have this, this exists, and now I can go step by step and actually make adjustments and improve every now and then certain parts of this application. I actually also have plans, for example, to export or have a extra bundle that is just the marker converter and the interface basically is its own thing so that there are two parts of this story that are separated from each other so that I can release the one part, which is the chapter marker converter. That can actually be a simple library that I can also publish to NPM, for example, because all of this is in Node.js and JavaScript mostly. And then that is a extra NPM library that other people can use to also convert between those different types of markers from Resolve as well as Premiere Pro or Audition, but probably at some point also XML files or Final Cut files and stuff like that. And then this becomes a whole useful little thing for all kinds of uses. And for me, this here, the web interface is one version. I'm also going to build a Alfred workflow that this can be done with so that it's easier done with file actions and stuff like that. If you are a user of Alfred, you know what I mean probably. So again, this is a basic prototype. There is so much that I have ideas for and adjustments that I could make here. And if you have any ideas, you can of course always share those with me. I am at Chris Spiegel on pretty much any platform like Telegram as well as Instagram and Twitter. So with this overlook, this quick video is already over. And if you are interested in this, please check it out. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know how you would use it what you might want to add here, what feature set would be interesting for you, and we can discuss that in the comments or in private messages. Now with all that said, I hope you have an amazing day. Make something, maybe even learn how to program or automate certain parts of your life, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao!